In this video, we'll discuss about the ECG changes in hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia. In our previous videos, we have discussed about the ECG changes in hypokalemia and hyperkalemia. So you can go through those videos if you have not watched those videos yet. So let's begin. So to understand the ECG changes in the calcium disorders, you need to understand this action potential. And this is a cardiac myocyte action potential. The calcium basically, it affects this plateau phase of the action potential. That is the, this two phase two of the depolarization in the cardiac myocyte. So in cases of the hypercalcemia, the electric uh, current, let's say in easy terms, is conducted very fast. So there is certaining of the ventricular depolarization leading to the certaining of the QT interval. Whereas in hypocalcemia, this phase is prolonged, uh, leading to the prolonged QT interval. So this slide summarizes the ECG changes in hyper and hypocalcemia. Hypercalcemia, usually it shortens the QT interval. And this is due to the shortening of the ST segment. Similarly, in addition to shortening of the QT interval, T waves, they appear to take off right from the end of the QRS complex. And there is an increased J wave, or we call it Osmond waves. And when hypercalcemia is very severe, there can be ST segment elevation flattened or biphasic T waves and the prominent U waves. However, in cases of the hypocalcemia, the QT interval will be prolonged due to stretching out of the ST segment. And sometimes there can be the rare changes in the severe cases like ST elevation, decreased T wave voltage. T wave flattening, terminal T wave inversion, and deeply inverted T waves. So now we'll go through some of the ECGs in the hyper and hypocalcemia and try to see the findings. So this is the first ECG. Here you can actually see the three ECGs. This is of a normal patient, of a patient with hypocalcemia and hypercalcemia. So let's start with hypercalcemia. Here you can see that this ST interval is certain in comparison to this normal uh, normal QT. You can see this this QT is short in case of the hypercalcemia. So before understanding what is short QT or what is long QT, you need to know what is the normal QT interval. Usually in the adult men, normal QT interval is between 350 to 450 millisecond, whereas in adult women, it's around 360 to 460 milliseconds uh, so to calculate the qt interval there are many formulas but uh, one of the most commonly used formula is known as Paget's formula and uh, you can calculate qt interval that's corrected qt by uh, divide uh, by using this formula qt interval over the root of the rr interval so as you can see in this hypercalcemia the corrected qt interval is 0 0.36 it's um, certain in comparison to the normal corrected QT. Similarly, if you look closely, you can see there's this T wave that seems to take off directly from the end of the QRS complex. Whereas in the normal issues, you can see that there is a flat ST segment just after the QRS complex. Uh, whereas in hypercalcemia, the T waves they start immediately after the QRS complex. So this is one of the typical finding in the hypercalcemia. Okay, now uh, looking at the hypocalcemia, you can see that this ST segment is prolonged, leading to the prolonged QT interval. So this is also a typical finding in hypercalcemia. One thing you need to note is this prolonged QT interval is not due to the changes in the T wave or presence of the U wave, like in cases of the hypocalcemia. In hypocalcemia, it's due to the lengthening or st uh, stretching of the ST segment. So let's go to the next ECG. So this is a ECG of a patient with hypercalcemia. And as you can see here, the QT interval is very short here. And as you can see, the T wave seems to take off directly from the end of the QRS complex. So these are the typical findings in cases of the hypercalcemia. So this is the third ECG, and uh, this ECG shows the Osmond waves or J waves in the hypercalcemia. Actually, 
Yeah, J wave is a positive deflection in the EGCD at the junction between QRS complex and the ST segment. So this is the J wave or Osborne wave. You can see this uh, positive deflection in the structure of the QRS complex, right? So this is the J wave. And usually this is attributed to the altered ventricular uh, transmural action potential. And so Osborne's waves, Osborne waves are also a feature of the hypercalcemia. However, it might not be seen in all the patients unless hypercalcemia is very severe. So this fourth ECG shows the ECG change in the hypocalcemia. As you can see in this ECG, that the QT interval is prolonged and due to the stretching of the ST segment. And, and this is a classical of the hypocalcemia. So sometimes there can be the pseudo prolonged QT interval in cases of the hypocalcemia, hypokalemia because in hypokalemia, there is the presence of the T wave and it is followed by the presence of the U wave. When this T wave and U wave merge with each other in severe hypokalemia, that can produce the apparent QT prolongation, which can be confused with the QT prolongation of the hypocalcemia. So to differentiate between these two situations, we have to look at the ST segment. Usually, in cases of the hypocalcemia, this QT prolongation is due to the stretching of the ST segment, not due to the changes in the T waves or the presence of the U wave. So this feature will help you to differentiate between the ECG change of the hypocalcemia and hypokalemia in some confusing cases. So this is the fifth ECG, and this also shows the prolonged QT interval in hypocalcemia. Like you can see here, the QT interval is very long. And this is the sixth ECG. Again, it shows the same thing. It shows the long QT interval, which is due to the stretching of the ST segment. So these are the references uh, which we used during pre while preparing this video. So if you want to go into more details, you can uh, read this doc on these uh, these books, uh, these articles, and uh, if you want to buy some great ECG books, I have kept the uh, uh, links of the book in the description as well. So I hope this video was helpful. If this video was helpful, please share it with your friends, colleagues, or with the juniors, seniors. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more videos.